reading a very long verse for us, so I want us to be very fast along with me. And please, whatever thing you see there, just begin to tick them. We, may, we are not coming back to study it. It's a message of his own. We have prepared the message, but we just want the Lord to give us the lifting for we to come and teach it. But for you, I want you, everything you see there that has happened, just mark it. And whatever thing you know that have not happened there, tick it somehow, and then you will ask me, why has this not yet happened? After we share the grace. If you found any. How many of you have opened Matthew chapter 24? Please try to get a Bible, a book Bible. It will be very, very helpful to us. Sometimes when you are dancing like this, if you're hyper to your whatever thing for, it gives you distraction, it, it costs you distress. No matter the anointing of the pastor, you cannot be blessed that day because something has shook you. But your, five, your Bible for you can just pick it and keep on dancing. True or false? Nobody high part of 200 will fall or your phone of 900, 600, 300 euro will fall down and break and feel comfortable before the service end. Eh? So am I lying? Phone 500, 600, 800, 1,000 beyond. If you fall down and break, even if not God has. <laughs> Many people don't care, even if not God has. The fed guilt, they, they can hold God responsible for allowing the thing to break. But not knowing that it's not the fault of God. So we want to advise you to have a paper, your, the written book. So that in case of anything, you don't have any cause to, to, to feel frank, to get, you understand what I'm saying? How many of you understand what I'm saying? Now, I want to read, I want us to be very fast because we, we, are, we are working on something that is going to be very helpful to us. Matthew chapter 24. Let me read from verse 1. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciple came up to show him the building of the temple and Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? As surely I say to you, not one Stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. This was one of the reasons they have to conspire against Jesus. Never knew the stone Jesus was talking about is himself, not just the physical building. Our concentration starts from verse 3. Please, I may not be explaining, I, I just want you to pick things. Then I'll show you why we are teaching what we are teaching. Now, as he sat on the mountain of Olive, the disciple came to him privately, saying, Tell us when will this thing be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age? Tell us what will be the sign of your coming and at the same time the end of age. Because everything apart from God that exists have an expiring date. Am I communicating? Everything apart from God and his word have an expiring date. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take ye that no one deceive you. Please mark that. Take ye that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name, say, I am the Christ, and I will deceive, and we deceive many. And you will hear of rumors, you will hear of wars, and rumor of war. That's two things. One, you will hear of war, but you also hear of rumor of war. There are war already globally, and we are hearing of rumor of war between America China, Iran, Israel, and so many. These are what power nation today they want to fight. It's no longer little, little nations that are fighting now. The main nations, they want to fight on their own. So the Bible says you shall hear war and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Please 
take notes. For nation will not. It says this one will happen, but this one is not an indication. Now he now says, let me begin to show you some indication. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famine and pestilence. Now the word kingdom against kingdom, there are only two kingdoms that exist. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And you know Jesus always make reference to the kingdom of God. So there are only two kingdoms that truly exist. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And the Bible says there will be war between these two kingdoms. And that is why you see today nearly every other faith or every other belief system have raised up their hand against Christianity. You understand me? These are prophetic declarations to show us the sign of end time. All kinds of laws are being passed on daily basis against Christianity. Every other religion are backing every other, I don't know how to put it, are backing every other things that are contrary. Apart from the Christian faith. <laughs> so the Bible says kingdom against kingdom and there will be famine and pestilence. At present now we are told that most of the crops in this nation did not produce properly for this year. You understand what I'm saying? For this year. I don't know of other nations, but I know for other nations, as far as coronavirus is concerned, it has affected so many things. So there are famine and there are pestilence. The pestilence are the things that feed on the crops. In Dubai, there was something that they say it fall on Dubai. That looks like pestilence. If it fall on your skin, there is no treatment before coronavirus matter came up. Not in during Bible days in our time. At last year, this year. You understand me? If you fall on anything, can feed on the thing, including human. That's pestilence. And earthquakes in various places. You know that one is already a story already. We are about to enter summer now. Earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. Who now? The church. Who are they going to deliver to tribulation? Who? Who are they going to deliver to tribulation? The church. And the Bible says they will kill you. There are two types of deaths. Not the one you know. And you will be hated by nation for my name's sake. And you will be hated by nation for my name's sake. <laughs> and then many will be offended we betray one another you know today you know one of the biggest challenge today is that uh, people even set trap for you to do one thing for them to give you reason why people no longer have relationship before you do anything <laughs> One of us says something one day. He says, Somebody set a trap for you. I said, Nobody set a trap for you. I said, You have already foreseen it ahead of time that there's nobody that is setting trap for you. In the world we live in today, and if you watch your, your mouth too much not to say anything, they will still hate you. If you say something, they will still hate you. 
Is it not so? So it is better you talk and say what is right and then they hate you for the kingdom's sake. Is the beginning. It's just an evidence of where we are. You understand me? So when you are doing what is right and people begin to hate you, keep on doing what is right. I want, I, wish, I want to show you, I'm just showing you something. It's not the teaching of today. Why we need to do, why we need to practice what we need to practice and why we need to learn something we have to learn today is because of this. The world is not growing good, it's growing wicked. Eh? According to prophetic calendar, the world is not growing good. Because the Bible says nation will rise against nation and men will be lovers of money. People will even hate their parents. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. One says, one sent a message one time. Uh, he, he will say something about uh, somebody who deceived him away from AGM. God have to talk to the person, say that person is something, something, something. But the truth is that the person has already deceived the person out of the church. Before his eye open, it don't go too far. Eh? I'm not the one who he said, now he used the matter of saying that God tell him. So the person is an evil person. But the truth is that Satan has already captured him already. Many will be deceived. You are looking at me. <laughs> if you are not careful, eh? <laughs> I told brothers and the, our ministers, I said, all of you watch me. If I'm doing anything that is contrary to what I'm preaching, put me in order. If, I'm, if the life I'm living is different from what I am teaching as a pastor, say, put me in order. I don't want to be in the other side, see you put in heaven. And no pastor will be in here, take his member to heaven. And you don't see motto, where no fear is Rimini, and he carried the people rich Rimini. Eh? A pastor, let, let assume you are driving a vehicle now. A vehicle who, that cannot get to Chesena, it gets stuck here. And the same vehicle, it don't break down, everything don't crash down. It now carry everybody to the other side. It's not possible. So any pastor who cannot go to heaven cannot carry the people. Because the deceit he will practice. Many, you see, people copy what you practice than what you teach. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> it is more easy to copy with you, they practice, what you they do, than what you they tell them. Most especially as a leader. So you must learn by all costs to subject yourself to what you are teaching. The Bible says, verse 12, and because loneliness we abound. Another word for loneliness in biblical terms is iniquity. Say, and loneliness we abound. In today's church, we have no regard for iniquity. A young man and the wife, they have not, uh, and their sons to me, and I say to them, it is inappropriate for you to be in this country without going to church, that you have to go to church. And I said, but the city where you did, I know a church that has a branch there. That has a branch there. <laughs> I, was, I was open to you. I was not making the recommendation. I don't know I'm a lawa, I am in a year. I was not recommending somewhere. And I said, but I know the city you are. There's a church I know that has a branch there. I said, go there and go and fellowship. At least go and fellowship with them there. You must belong to a family. When he went there, he was the one who called me. He says, sir, even he himself knows say, it is not proper to be swaggering. It is not proper to wear trousers here to tear your jeans. He said, even he know. He said, imagine a pastor say, if you want toast again, sometimes you need to swagger. After you don't catch him, you have to. He said, when he heard the pastor say that, 
in that same church in day had been a clubhouse. It was later on I realized the same church building is what they use for club. Eh? It was later on I realized the same building they use it for club. In that court, me say, sir, I went to the church. He began to give. I said, it can never be. Brother Sasu, you were with me in one meeting. I went to meet him somewhere. And we saw a reflection. And I said, one of those people is the pastor in so and so place. When I look at them by their fruits, you shall know them. I say, yeah, that young man is right. The Bible says, an iniquity abound is a typical sign of end time. When people no longer see iniquity as sin in the sight of God, when the church no longer acknowledge such things as things that are wrong, have you not seen in this country where people pamper iniquity, like say not be something that is wrong before God? Have you not seen it? One time there was something they post on, on, on YouTube. Some ladies, they all wear tight like this. I know some of you have seen it. About six of them begin to dance one kind of thing inside church. And they post it, they say, is this one church or somewhere? All the ministers of God sat down there. And these are young, young ladies. I say, God forbid. It is better to be in club, you know you are in clubhouse, than to be in the house of God seeing this kind of thing happening. Why? It's prophecy. The sign of end time. When the cold names now hold the church, that the church no longer know what is right from wrong. Am I communicating? I know we will meet in heaven. 